You're listening to School Counseling Simplified, a podcast with easy-to-implement strategies for busy school counselors. Here's your host, Rachel Davis, from Bright Futures Counseling. Grab your party hat, y'all, because it's Impact's birthday month. Woohoo! Impact is turning two, and I cannot believe it. To celebrate, I'm hosting the Ultimate Small Group Experience exclusively for our Impact members. So what is the Ultimate Small Group Experience? It is a virtual pop-up workshop exclusive for members where you're going to receive PD trainings from me, special guests, 25 plus small groups are included that are valued at over $200. We're going to have giveaways within our group, discussion circles, breakout groups to brainstorm best practices. It's going to be so much fun, y'all. If you wanna bring your small groups to the next level this semester and to get ready for next year, you are absolutely going to love this. So again, you have to join it during March, Impact's birthday month, to get exclusive access to the Ultimate Small Group Experience. It's going to start on March 29th, but the earlier you join, the sooner you'll have access to all the included groups and materials. So you can sign up today for just $29. Get in on the fun. Go over to stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash small groups. Let's get this party started. Hey there, thanks for listening to another episode of School Counseling Simplified. So like I mentioned last week, during the month of March, I will be interviewing our Impact members, a different one each week since it is our birthday month. Impact is turning two. So today I have a very special guest on. Instead of talking to a school counselor, I'm actually interviewing a school psychologist. So I talked with Dr. Natasha Tumbarello and Dr. Natasha reached out to me and was like, I want to be on the podcast, but I don't know if you want me to because I'm not a school counselor. But I was like, no, I definitely do because I know school psychs often have a lot of overlap with school counselors and that we could learn a lot from her. So it turns out she is a school psychologist who is wearing the hat as a school counselor. Um, and so she joined Impact so she could use our resources to really enhance her counseling curriculum. We talk about achieving balance, being visible to make sure that no students slip through the cracks, how to be flexible and work with your team, and how she does a little reading in the morning to prepare for her day. I think you're going to love this episode. I loved Natasha's energy. She was super great to talk with, and I hope you love it as much as I do. Okay, let's check it out. Hey, Natasha, how are you? I'm great, Rachel. Thank you for having me today. Thanks for coming on. I love getting to talk to different counselors from all over the country with all different backgrounds. Um, It's just so cool to hear everyone's unique story. So tell us about yours. Tell us about who you are and your background in education. Sure, sure. So um, I'm uh, Natasha Tumbarello. I actually am Dr. Natasha Tumbarello. I'm a school psychologist, which is a little different from, I think, most of the guests that you have here, um, because I, I do some counseling, but my background and training are in school psychology. So um, just a little bit about me. I am um, I'm living in a suburban area of New York. I know that's very far from you all the way in Costa Rica, right? Yes. And um, and I have two children. One is 15. My girl is 15. My um, my son is 13. Our Wheaton dog is a big part of our family. And I live with my husband, of course, too. And I've been a school psychologist for, gosh, over 20 years. And it's a really, really great field. And there's a lot of overlap with what I think you do as a counselor as well. Um, I work in a really great elementary school, but I wasn't always at this elementary school. I've had quite a quite a bit of different um, experiences over time. Um, My world of education opened up when I was at um, St. Joseph's College, which is in New York. And that's where I got my bachelor's degree in psychology. But I knew I wanted to work in a school, so I didn't know kind of what to do with it. And I loved being around kids and counseling and all this. So I had this great professor that said, look into school psychology. It's similar to being a guidance counselor or school counselor. It's a little bit like being a social worker, but there's you know more and different. So I looked into it, went for my master's degree in Western Carolina, Carolina University, which is all the way in North Carolina. And that was a very good experience. And then I missed home. So I came back to New York where I got into my field as a preschool school psychologist, which was really neat because it was kind of the first time that a lot of kids with special needs were identified. And um, my, my love just kept growing from there for this field. And I decided I wanted to max out my education. So that's when I started to pursue my doctoral degree. So I went to the City University of New York's Graduate Center and was commuting back and forth to the city 
and back out to where I live. And I was working full time and we started our family. So it was just <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot on our plate. But I think everybody has that kind of season where we go through balancing a billion things. So now it's gotten a little bit quieter. And I'm, as I said, at a school psychologist in an elementary school and um, the caseload is lovely. And uh, I get to use all of your resources every day. And it's been such a great help to have um, the resources that are out there by yourself and so many other counselors. School psychologists don't usually have all of these resources. We have a lot of TPT stuff for assessment and testing, but not counseling. So you have saved the day for <laughs> so many of my counseling days and, oh, and, and the different kids that I work with. I love hearing that. I love hearing that. Wow. Okay. Well, I love everything. Your background. That sounds amazing. Your enthusiasm is <laughs> great as well. So yes, I um, was asking Natasha, or I asked all of our impact members, like, hey, do you want to come on the podcast? I want to interview some of you guys. And you were like, well, I'm a school psychologist, so I don't know if you want me on. But I was like, no, this is perfect. <laughs> Because I think some of our listeners might be school psychologists. I know we have other impact members who are school psychologists, school social workers. Um, I have a special place in my heart for school psychologists. One of my best friends from grad school, um, I mean, from undergrad in psychology, ended up pursuing school psychology. And then I worked closely and shared an office with our school psychologist. Oh, when it's I was such, they're such great fields together. Yes. I think it's so um, really complimentary. Yes, she taught me so much. And I think I taught her things as well. So it was just amazing. Um, so tell us, are you, and I wanted to speak on, you were saying those busy seasons, because I know some of our <sighs> listeners may be in one. I look back on, which I didn't have kids at the time, but when I was in grad school, it was evening classes and I had an internship during the day and I had a job and I was like, how did I, what, when did I eat and do laundry and all those things? And that's exactly it. I don't remember yeah. how I functioned. I remember being a little yeah. low on sleep for sure. I remember mm -hmm. Starbucks was one of my favorite places still is. And I, you know, you just do it. And I think you, yep. there's a, there's a way that you find the resources you need. There's a support system that just finds you. Mm -hmm. And that was a big part of it. I could not do what I did then now right. in this season my, with my teenage kids is, you know, they're, they just have different needs than when I was, you know, in, in younger mode mm -hmm. and my husband's season has changed as well. So he, his work has also changed. It's just been an interesting development. I don't know how people do what they do when they balance it all, but you right. just do it. Right. And sometimes it's these resources like what you've set up that actually make it really manageable because I know it, you know, just for, for where I am in my life, it's been wonderful not having to recreate anything, not having to search and search because, you know, as a school psychologist, I was used to, um, different websites and games. And of course my professional organization to get information resources, but you know, to figure out what activity to use to now write lesson plans, which is a part of the requirement for me, which was brand new. I've never had to write a lesson plan before. So to be able to have access to the, the resources that you've put together, as well as a few other TPT amazing people, um, it's been life-saving and I, I can do my job with such high quality now. And I, can balance everything on my plate with such ease because these resources make it, oh my goodness, heaven, just heaven. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the kind words. That means so much. And that's just truly my intention when I go about creating things is just for exactly what you're saying. Like I want counselors and school psychologists to be able to spend more time in direct student services and less time planning and scouring the corners of the right. internet for all kinds of things. So right. thank you. Thank you. Um, oh so God. tell the listeners, so you're at a school now, do you have a school counselor at your site also, or are you kind of doing, we both don't. Jobs? So I was in, um, an elementary school and was helping. I was the person in charge of parochial schools for our district. I don't know how it works in Costa Rica, uh, you know, different schools to manage things differently. But, um, when there's a parochial school in district, you have to assign somebody to them to oversee any of the IEPs and, and all the meetings and such. So that was my role as well as being the full-time elementary psychologist. And that was just too much. It was too much for anybody. So to then move into where I am now, and there was resources, there was a social worker on site. Um, we never had a guidance counselor or school counselor. That was something that I didn't run into until I was able to get to the high school level. At the high school level, boy, there's 
school counselors everywhere. And I just got to be so close to the school counselors. And then, um, you know, of course, we had a bunch of social workers. There were two school psychologists, myself and another. But again, it was just a lot. And this was right when we were in COVID. So that was so that quarantine difficulty that everybody endured um, made me kind of re reflect on my path. And even late in my career, I have made a, a leap of faith and, and jumped to a position that was offered. And it is a, a, a just heaven. I'm in an elementary school, very small. And I am the school psychologist, the hat of the social worker and the hat of the school counselor as well. So there is nobody else for mental health. I am the, the only person. So I seek a lot of my old supports and colleagues and reach out to them almost daily to just say, hey, run this case with me. Hey, how would you do this? Hey, what have you tried? And again, because I didn't quite know the role of the school counselor, it really, again, was was essential that I, I looked for resources online. So that, right. that has been life-saving. Amazing. Yes. So you are busy then, because I can't imagine, yeah. I mean, I'm typically chatting with counselors and we're like, gosh, we have, you know, how do we do it all? And then you're also doing the assessment piece of school psychology. Wow. Okay. So that's really time consuming. It um, is, but I balanced at this time. The good mm -hmm. news is, you know, it's a small caseload and I can do a really good job with that caseload. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us, what do you love about your job? What's the best part? Oh gosh. Um, I love working with the kids, but especially the individual part of it. Um, I love group counseling for sure. I love assessment because it's one-to-one, -one, but that one-to-one -one individual counseling that I get to do now and do with, um, you know, integrity and fidelity and do it, you know, on a daily basis and really checking in on the students, the incremental notes of progress that I get to see because I have this ongoing contact with such a small group has been just so joyful. It brings me such, such a feeling of success and, and, and fulfillment that I get to work with these students. And I try really hard to not just work with students who need, um, you know, some kind of modifications or have special needs, but I really try hard to kind of be around the whole school mm -hmm. so that there's no reason why anyone couldn't come visit. You know, I, I tell everyone, just call me Dr. T, come to my office, come on over and visit. And I try to be as silly and goofy as possible so that um, hopefully there's this um, level of warmth that I, I'm hoping to emanate so that I can work with as many kiddos as possible and, and you know, connect with staff because right. that's been the most fulfilling, the most, most fulfilling is just seeing any bits of success and hearing the parents report success and just feeling like I, I might be making a little bit of a difference. <laughs> it is I know. Amazing. Yes, it's so rewarding to see those increments of success. And I love what you said about trying to see all the students. I know there's always that group, that middle group of like average that kind of slip through the cracks, right? Because we have our high need kiddos who are on our radar. And then you have your high achievers who are on your radar. But then there's just everybody else, the majority of our kiddos that fall into that middle range. So I think it's so important to make connections with those students as well. Yes. I agree. I agree. And I just, I just doing the greetings in the morning has been helpful. I had um, one professor who told me that he used to go to gym class with all of the kindergartners because that way he got to know all of the kindergartners. They got to know him as just a fun adult in the building. And he used to make me laugh telling stories about how they would ask, what bus are you on? You know, just to, like thinking that he was just another grown up and just a, you know, maybe big kid hanging out with him. So I took that to heart and really have tried very hard to make sure I, I'm at least uh, warm to everyone, welcoming to every single kid, even though I know who needs me most. Right. And I love that you said you do the morning greeting. Almost every counselor I talk to does that, which is amazing and so important just to be that. Face. And you can see, and, and Rachel, I think I read it on, on one of your blogs as well, just that you can see who needs a check-in in the mm -hmm. morning by being able to greet them in the morning. I can see, Ooh, someone's coming off a little bit, not themselves. Oh, that one's in a great mood today. Oh, it's going to be so nice. Oh, I'll check in with this. And it just gives me a little bit of a rundown about how should I start my day? Who needs a little extra support or a check-in today? Um, instead of just kind of blindly following my schedule. 
Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even like um, the other day, I, so I'm working now at the international school again, helping support their school counselor. And I, it was Valentine's day. And so a lot of the kids were doing activities outside and they were, cause it's sunny here, <laughs> not cold. Um, they were making these cute little like Valentine's headbands or something. And I was like, I just want to walk around and like, see what they're up to. Um, but just little things like that. Don't just stay in your office all day, you know, just see what they're right. doing. And then you can see who's having a behavior issue or who's in a great mood today or who's seems right. a little sad today. Um, any kind of check-in like that, that can happen organically is awesome. I agree. I think it's huge. And it's not something everyone has time for, you know, you just mm-hmm. don't, you have to have the balance to be able to do the, you know, the regular check-ins, the pacing, the you know, walking around the building, not everyone has time for it. But if you can make the time, I feel like it makes a difference with every single person, the adults, children, every person in that building, as mm-hmm. long as they see that you are present. Right. Absolutely. So I know you mentioned you have a smaller caseload, which you feel happy to have that. And I'm sure we have some envious listeners, um, but you've mentioned balance a couple of times. What strategies do you have for maintaining balance? Let's see. Um, I mean, if, just so you have perspective and I, you know, listen, a school psychologist's caseload might be different from, so I don't, I don't know what kind of numbers, but um, you know, the recommended number of students for a school psychologist is usually one to 500 in a whole school. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then of big, that, I believe, yes. So then of that, it should be about 20% would be kids with IEPs or section 504 plans, et cetera. So in my last placement where I spent quite a, quite a bit of time, um, I had about 1,200 kids on my caseload with about 150 IEPs. So yeah. the percentages were not quite yeah. <laughs> balanced and it was so stressful. So here, and again, just to put it in perspective, I have a caseload, there's 125 kids in the school and I have 20, 25 students who are on my caseload. So that's been in itself a forced balance. It's been a mm-hmm. way to just seek other resources. And I, and I feel like most people, we all think that once we have a job, we should stay there forever. And I'm not at all encouraging everyone to just fly, but I am saying that maybe we need to keep our options open and um, seek the balance you need by sometimes taking that leap of faith or exploring um, you know, a little bit of distance or a little bit of just being a little um, creative in the way that you find it. So that has been a huge resource or strategy in itself was just believing that this new setting would be fulfilling. And it has been tremendously. And again, it's just based on like quality of, of the work that I can do now. Um, other than that, I find that I, I have to schedule everything. I tend to be a very organized person. So I, I pre-plan tremendously. Um, resources, again, I, I like to print. I like to have my binders full for each group or each student. I like to remember what goals I'm working on. I like to check in with, you know, doing some pre-test and post-test to see if the things are working that I'm doing. And um, I rely a lot on my colleagues. I rely a lot on my family to also kind of understand. And, and if I seek support, I I'm, try to be open about any support that I need being available and, and also reciprocating that. So um, those are the strategies I can think of off the top oh, of my head. That's great. And I just okay. kind of, I threw that question at you. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. No, that just, um, I love that. And I love the reminder, like, It's okay if you need to search for a little while to find the school that best fits, you know, your lifestyle and thing. That's such a good reminder. So thank you for that. Um, Sure. Now let's talk about challenges. What do you find challenging or frustrating? Um, gosh, sometimes you can't always follow your plan for the day. And I think you have to be really flexible in any of these fields where you're working in education or working with children. Um, so sometimes I find it frustrating when I can't meet the needs that I had planned, you know, just trying to, to 
balance whatever crisis comes up. And I know I'm needed and I know I can handle it. And I have the, the, the training required. I am competent, but just knowing that now I can't meet that student's need who was relying on me. And now I have to somehow rearrange things to balance. And will that upset the teacher? I don't want to upset the teacher. I don't want to upset the parent if they're sad that they didn't get their scheduled appointment that day. So some of the challenges are just, you know, being flexible and then um, really relying on everyone else to be understanding and flexible too. So it's a little bit in my control, but it's quite a bit out of my control. Yes. And I was just doing another interview with another counselor and she said the exact same thing. I think that's the biggest struggle is that when a crisis occurs, but you already have your, like you said, you're a planner, like I'm the same way, you have your day, I'm going to do a group here, a lesson here, a parent meeting here, and then boom, something out of your control happens. Um, so it's kind of balancing, like, I don't want to, you know, flake on this commitment. This teacher has been expecting me to come in and teach this lesson, but then at the same time, the students in crisis. So I always recommend, which in your case, it's extra tricky because you're wearing all the hats, but I always say like, find your school psychologist or find your school social worker, kind of make a team of people to respond to crisis on demand, at least till you can get there. So you can kind Absolutely. of- Absolutely like recreate yourself to be in multiple places at once. Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful. I, and I, even though there isn't a technically a social worker or technically a um, school counselor in my building, boy, I have some people who step up and really do help in any way. And they volunteer. And some of them are teachers of that student um, who had them prior. Some are, you know, the character ed person I work with, mm -hmm. the principal steps up even. It's, it's really been incredible to see in a smaller school People wear multiple hats, which I yeah. think is different than when we're in the big school where everyone has a dedicated hat and that's your hat for the day and yeah. you don't take that off. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's been my experience as well. So that's so good to hear. Okay. So I want to ask you about your day in the life. So as a school psychologist, also functioning as a school counselor, what is your typical uh, day look like? So um, given no crisis on that day, a typical day might look like um, my going down. Is, and, and, and I know this is silly, Rachel, but I just want to um, also mention, I get in a little early every day because that's kind of my personality. And I like to read in the morning when I get to work. I just like to have some quiet time before I ever open the computer and look at the emails. And I don't open my planner quite yet. I like to just read a little bit of something that will kind of give me some inspiration for the day. And then I start with the work mode. And so then I um, just kind of review, do I have everything in place? Do I have all my materials? Look at the schedule. And then when school's about to begin, that's when I go down for our arrival, which again, is just a lovely part of each day, just to see how everyone's doing, their moods coming in, even the staff members seeing our moods and knowing if I have to check in on either any of the staff as well. Um, and then I usually begin with individual counseling in the mornings. That's more typical for me. And then I move my um, my group counseling tends to be more in the afternoon or later in the day. And then in between, it's a lot of um, meetings. Sometimes I'm chairing CSE and CPSE and Section 504 meetings. Um, sometimes we have some parent meetings. Um, and then it's just checking in on students, a, a lot of check-ins. Um, walking around the school to just see if everyone's okay, listening out for anybody who might need something. And then in between all of that, I'm also writing reports and taking a lot of progress notes so I can analyze and see how are we doing? Are we working towards what we need? Do I need to tweak anything? And then in my downtime, I'm looking on to get my resources. So um, <laughs> I'm on GPT, I'm on impact, I'm yep. on all those things. I mean, that's a day in full. It's a, it's a lovely way. I, I, sometimes I'll help out a dismissal mm -hmm. and just make sure everyone, you know, gets their goodbye or a last check-in to make sure they're going home. Okay. But that's a typical day minus any crisis. Right. I love it. I love it. And I love that you mentioned that you do your individual counseling in the morning and then your groups tend to be in the afternoon. And I always encourage counselors to do this. Find when you can perform best, because sometimes maybe you're like, I want to start off with teaching the class lessons, but then save the one-on-one -on -one for the afternoon or maybe vice versa. Um, or maybe you only like to do your groups like on Tuesdays, or I used to have this rule, <clears throat> excuse me, where I would never do class lessons on Mondays because I felt like I was always just like flustered, it's the first day back yeah. and I didn't want to have to go teach a whole class. So I would just stop scheduling them on Monday. So of course, some scheduling's out of, you know, listeners control, but if you can schedule within your control, find where you can be your best, show up as your best self. Um, also, I'm curious if you don't mind asking, 
What are you reading in the morning that is inspiring you? For oh, life? gosh, it depends. I mean, oftentimes it's oh, something silly, like, uh, I, you know, some kind of spiritual thing, um, something, um, you know, affirmations are lovely. Sometimes I'll just read something on, you know, positive psychology. I just tend to geek out in the morning and, and start some way of like getting my mind set in the right way so that I can go in and be as calm and present as possible. And, and be ready to tackle whatever might be on my path. So I feel like just taking that couple of minutes um, is just really for me, it's been very helpful. I love that. I love that. Good. Awesome. Okay. Well, you've already like mentioned here and there and sang praise, which I so appreciate about impact already, but you are one of our impact members. Um, and it is our birthday month of two years with the membership. Wow. It's crazy. I know. So can you tell us how are you using the resources inside impact and how is it helping? Sure. You? Sure. Um, you know, interesting. I, I fell upon you and I thought, oh, this is going to be fantastic. This is just going to be, you know, such a nice subscription a nice way to automatically have the information searched out for me. And when I joined, you were doing topics um, based on a month at a time. Mm -hmm. So we would receive all this information. You did those calls, you did the professional development and all of the, um, you know, just kind of trainings and, and the short uh, videos that you have about how to use was awesome oh, because <laughs> I, you know, I didn't always want to just read through 50 pages that I've just put in a binder and now figure out, okay, well, what's the, you know, let me, let me have, what are the nuances of this? Mm -hmm. So for you to do those videos, I thought this is the perfect situation for me. Um, and then you've changed it recently where now we can access by topic and we can access gosh, by theme or by, by uh, challenge that we're trying to address. And that's opened up even more doors. So I can pull my, it's February. I pulled my February resources. I'm pulling up my March ones next and, you know, making all my binders. But at the same time, I also know, oh, okay. Student with separation anxiety, he's been really struggling. I'm going to be doing some individual work with him. Let me see what resources I can pull strictly related to separation anxiety. For example, mm -hmm. um, I have some girls who were having a hard time. Some of the older girls, a little bit of that relational drama mm -hmm. and was able to pull up, you know, some friendship circle, friendship information, social skills. Um, and, and that was lovely. They responded so well to it. And these were girls who did not, they were not <laughs> fans at the time. So really being able to work with these fun materials and the way that I can access them and feel like I can reach out to others who, you know, I don't have the same background that you do. I don't have that training in school counseling that you do. I have one that overlaps certainly, mm -hmm. but to really have these resources to look at your ask us standards and such, it's just been awesome. It's been oh. so helpful. And I do love all the revisions that you just made. The, the, oh, the way to be able to access all the topics has been lovely. Yay. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Um, yes. For all the impact members who we did the upgrade in January and I feel like it was just like a nice surprise, like, oh, wow, now we get it this way. I just, it's Everything. much easier to access. And then we, I don't know if you've seen it yet, super recently as of like last week switched from, we used to have the Facebook group, but now we switched to like a on the same platform, a community um, where yes. counselors can kind of connect and through discussion circles and we'll host our videos there. And I like that better because it was kind of clunky to be like, leave here and go to the Facebook group. And not oh, even that's like so Facebook. great. So. And I'm not on Facebook. I tend right. to be a private person. I don't mm -hmm. have a big social media presence. I don't have any you know, kind of resources. I'm not a TPT maker. Mm -hmm. So uh, to be able to connect with other people on, as you said, that one platform is, I'll, I'll, I know I'll be taking more advantage of that, knowing that Facebook was not my platform. Right. So this is wonderful. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This has been That's really good. great, Natasha. Thank you for coming on. And oh, thank you, your Rachel. Now. It's been <laughs> a pleasure to work with you and meet you. And, and again, just keep the resources coming. They have been <laughs> Really, they make my job heaven. And, and I thank you for, you know, letting me talk about that a little bit today. Yes, of course. Well, we're adding new ones every month. So <laughs> be on the lookout. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rachel. Enjoy your day. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. Like Natasha was saying, she uses Impact to really enhance her curriculum, and it has been a game changer in providing her with activities and lessons to use with kiddos so she can spend more time in direct services. 
If you're like Natasha and wear a lot of hats, which I'm sure you do, then I know you're going to love Impact just as much as she does. And remember, if you join during March, our birthday month, then you'll get exclusive access to the Ultimate Small Group Experience. All right, talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to School Counseling Simplified. You can find the links from today's episode in the show notes. If you'd like to connect with Rachel, she's on Instagram and Teachers Pay Teachers at Bright Futures Counseling. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes of School Counseling Simplified. Talk to you next week.